Alright. Sigil 2. I have, uh... I have not seen a whole lot of Sigil 2 related, uh... Uh, Sigil 2 related stuff. I think I, I saw a friend of mine speedrun the first map a little bit. Um, in the Unity port. Uh, haven't really explored much beyond that. Uh, yep. The same deal as always. If you've not seen the original uh, thing, go to Mount Payne's channel. Go give him your first view and come back. We'll watch this together. He has given me permission to make this, to, uh, to react to this uh, on stream now. They're not really videos anymore. Um,. I guess let's get going, fellas. Let's do it. Hello there. I'm Mount Payne 27, and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Sigil 2, John Romero's unofficial sixth episode of Ultimate Doom. Released on our favorite game's 30th birthday, Sigil 2 doesn't yeah. commemorate id's masterpiece so much as it elaborates on the first Sigil's aesthetics and gameplay. Romero serves up another nine courses of fraught action set in the crackling furnace of 80s heavy metal hell. Lava, darkness, cages, and evil cracks are your money back. Sigil 2 reprises <laughs> Romero's signature shootable eye switches, but adds three new motifs this time around. Every level contains one special secret, which will in most cases lock permanently 30 seconds after the map starts, okay. a shootable slice of fire blue that opens goodies guarded by zombie men, and at least one cyber demon on UV. Romero okay. also recruited James Paddock to provide an original score this time, and Jimmy obliged with two clips of new classics. Sigil was actually my first PWOD. So while many people used it like How's a going, machine Dokai? back to 1993, I spent most of my first Sigil 2 playthrough reminiscing about 2019. For that alone, Sigil 2 was worth it. That being said, John Romero deserves to be judged as an equal in the community he created. So I'm going to do my best to rub the nostalgia and starstruckness from my eyes today. Here's how the show works. I believe in you, friends. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. Quality grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. We grade difficulty from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D and The tears of fans. Mind, it's such a good a great visual idea. I love it. Yours, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun. I'm sure I've commented on that before, the day, but... This show is about spreading the joy of doom. So let's do so. Before we start, the rules are we play on ultra violence and must pistol start each level. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it. Saves are I guess we'll see Kirk starting when we get there. Huh? kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z Doom, and today's compatibility is limit removing. Note that we're playing Sigil 2 version 1.0, same one that released on Doomsday 2023. Now to the wad. E6M1. Cursed Darkness. It takes about 10 seconds for the initial euphoria of playing Sigil 2 to curdle into pain. My first Sigil 1 playthrough was cushioned by foreknowledge, and I'll never take that for granted again. Cursed Darkness absolutely hobbled me. On December 10th, I staggered out of here with several secrets missing and a dozen monsters still kicking. With a cyber demon in the first room, hit scanners and 20 damage lava everywhere, a pittance of health pickups, and an exit surprise party I could barely believe, Cursed Darkness is one long wince broken up by way too many any eye switches. I don't mind the pitilessness, but Romero's game design guide hand is too strong. The dark room seems clunky and overcomplicated until you realize that you don't actually need to shoot any of the eye switches to ride up the exit elevator. This begs the question, why not? The awkwardness of the cyber you, I guess. sky crusher sequence outweighs its ingenuity, and I'm not talking about the sky crusher itself. The bullet cave revealing an invuln, and the invuln revealing the crusher switch feels very contrived. The 30 second secret reopens when you smush Cybe, so don't risk your life for it. Trade marked and time-wasting though it is, I do like the view from the chain gun, and it's hard not to respect Romero's stick to with shimmying secrets. He always makes them worth the trouble. It was fun to wriggle in Cursed Darkness's clutches once, but replays felt stilted. Grade B-, minus, difficulty A-. That is... one hell of an opener. Man, that looked crunchy. I see why you say that, Frodo. E6M2, Violent Hatred. A oh, secret really? stuffed lodge surrounded by a lake of lava, violent hatred as a mischievous streak a mile wide. The hallway closets are crammed with monsters, the courtyards primed with teleporting fiends and booby traps precious ammo. The front door switch is a fake wall, which also disguises a secret bullet box storage space, and a lot there's of a cyber demon bullets. dropping around outside for no other reason than to make your tiptoe along the gutter for goodies a bit more precarious. While I'm sure it was fun for John to place this cyber demon, some unfortunate trees make herding him to the kill zone 
difficult, and pattering him to death is only worth it for uninterrupted access to Fire Blue Zombo and his lucky helmet. Remember, Fire Blue Zombo. Two barons will eat all your shells. What's up, Nathan? Good to see you. Or find the chain gun, but thankfully, half the secrets in this map are easier to spot than this mandatory eye, so you shouldn't be left wanting. Is it Violent. just one zombie, or can it be multiple? Hatred really dried up for me in playthrough 3. After the secrets are found and the cyber gag gets old, this is just the thy flesh consumed outtake. Grade C, difficulty B. E6, M3, Twilight Desolation. The biggest difference between Sigil and Sigil 2 is it's less fun to execute the winning strategy once you've found it in Sigil 2. Eking out my first exit with just enough ammo to topple teleports behind you, Scythe, was much more fun than my third playthrough. When I knew where to find the plasma rifle, how to use the light amp goggles, not to trigger the rising wall in the Baron room before lighting them up, and that I didn't need to rocket jump to the secret exit. Thanks, Decino. Though aptly and often compared to Mount Erebus, Twilight Desolation is much more restrictive. You're almost guaranteed to take super lava damage using the teleporters, and unless you find all the sigil eyes and scoot around almost every elastic collision you can find, you'll lack the heavy weaponry necessary for cleanup. This map is probably the most egregious example of Sigil 2's secret bloat. There's one secret area for every eight monsters in Twilight Desolation. They're fun to find once, but chore-ish to checkbox once you know where to go, and that's this map in a nutshell. Grade C+, plus, difficulty oh boy. B minus. E6M9, Shattered Homecoming. Welcome back to 1993. Huh. Kind of. Even if you make it to the time of Secret Closet, Shattered Homecoming keeps you on a short leash with ammo at the start. You'll want to double back from the computer maze with your plasma gun and clear out the upstairs before proceeding through the red door. Nested within the fire blue secret is a sigil oh, are those line that reveals textures? a teleporter that sends you to the deathmatch map. It's a cute detour, and the parapet jump ramps are neat, but the layout and deco are distractingly mundane. Shattered Homecoming has some weak progression moments, too. Romero relies on the player hitting certain marks to reveal switches and open doors, the most jarring of which is the yellow key ambush. Why is it sitting in a broom closet? And why does uh grabbing a box of rockets open that closet? I'm not sure what to make of these room labels, either. They're conspicuous Spine. in the same way that most custom textures were in the mid-90s. Are those, uh, Saikatana textures? as visually strong as anything they, Romero's some different. now. Especially the ending, which looks like E1M3 with a huge bite taken out of it. The hellish corruption shtick <laughs> makes a much bigger impact when applying to man-made environments. Shattered Homecoming seesaws between Flub and Instant Classic, but Jimmy's MIDI lets it play the latter part more convincingly. That is a sick solo, let me tell you. That is a deluxe solo. Difficulty B. E6M4, Fragments of Sanity. James One of Haddock. Romero's most splintered and decrepit creations, the fittingly titled Fragments of Sanity, puts nearly all its chips on scenery. Unfortunately, the mad rush for the Berserk secret is the height of the excitement here. Sigil 2's second most obligatory cyber demon is bad at his job and a pain in the ass to go back for once you oh. retrieve the BFG. The intervening crusher section drags, and Romero's demonic rabble are disorganized and generally unscary. Despite its limited combat utility, Fragments of Sanity is neat to walk around. Crumbling gray tall pillars are a grim reminder of the base that once stood here, and the pulsing hell cliffs at the end of your dark descent bring alien vendetta to mind. I like the crackly lava because it makes so little sense that the engine becomes so confused it forgets to damage you sometimes. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Eye candy aside, this map has never really grabbed me. Grade C. Plus, like, it looks great, but also it's Ultimate Doom. And Ultimate Doom just feels very grindy. Is, is, I feel like it's a bit of an issue with Ultimate Doom stuff. It's e hard to make it interesting. 5 Wrathful Reckoning. An exciting digression into the dank depths of a hellish sewer, Wrathful Reckoning proves Romero can polish environments as well as he can mangle them. This decadent, toxic drain land conjures the chasm with its bronze corridors and sometimes uncertain form. Oh, they're it here. also okay. evokes central processing, computer station, and the parts that Perdition's Gate stole from Knee Deep in the Dead. You're gonna need the free soul sphere for Wrathful Reckoning's running of the bulls at the start, blasting through grunts and pitfalls while yeah, you know what? I remember this level a little bit too because same speedrunning friend was uh was running this map, and oops. And this section here, here, you can apparently line death skip so the elevator doesn't lower. And I remember he kept resetting because he was having issues with the skip. Because you get you gain like five seconds if you can skip it. 
bulls at the start, blasting through grunts and pitfalls while fending off barons you'll barely have ammo for is one of John's freshest combat scenarios. I continue to cheer when I see these jungle gym style secrets and their sweet rewards. This ledge walk allows you to telefrag the cyber in the self-assembling maze, oh, nice. thank god, and there's a fake wall in this poison bat that gives you a rad suit, effectively neutering the second cyber fight. Man, that's TNT level's a fake wall. Also, yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, secrets that require shimmying. I, ju I just love shimmying in general. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like the the John Romero horror map style. It's a bit of I wish a there was more of that. Exploit, but I much prefer it to BFGing a cyber demon while my feet slow. From, like what, from what little I know... Let me back this up. From what little I know of Sigil... Sigil seemed to give off that vibe a lot. God, and there's a fake wall in this poison like bag that you a rad suit, effectively neutering the second cyber fight. It's a bit of a clumsy exploit, but I much prefer it to BFGing a cyber demon while my feet slowly mutate. Rather yeah! Reckoning Peter's out after cyber number two. The eye shooting sequence right at the end is predictably dull, and backtracking to silence the sentry cattle you left behind is a bore, but I don't begrudge John sticking it to 100 percenters since he's already made that his mission statement. Atmospherically yeah. excellent and 80 percent lean, Wrathful Reckoning is one of Sigil 2 strongest and most memorable outings. Grade B plus, difficulty B. Because doesn't he also like take like patch out speedrunning tricks that get found occasionally? E6 M6 I think? Vengeance oh, what is Unleashed. This? Hell is digging its hooves in. Like a grander, eviler paths of wretchedness, Vengeance Unleashed is three prongs of punishment. On the right we have extreme rock climbing followed by an unholy prison riot. Straight ahead is a three-floor hell hotel. There's a vacancy for one dead doom guy, room service included. And on the left is the scariest Playable cyber CBT. demon maze I've seen since John Romero's last cyber demon maze. As soon as you have 40 to 60 hit points to spare, jump into the lava tube and hustle to the BFG. Oh, there man. is a secret rad suit you can use, but it's part of a string of ledge walking secrets in the labyrinth section. I lack the requisite patience and dexterity for the super combo of rad suit, BFG, invuln, cyber two tap if that's even intended. The big Minotaur is my least favorite part of the map, but at least he got Jimmy Paddock's noggin jogging. That's, yeah, that's, that's juicy. That's like the other two sections community are... chest two map five levels of juicy. Let me hear that bit again, because that sounded really cool. My least favorite part of the map, but at least he got Jimmy Paddock's noggin jogging. The other two sections yeah, that's are sick. more magical. That's sick. The rightmost path is Vintage Romero. Barons and Kakos are plenty and careful footwork required. I don't love the congestion that develops at the start here, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be so easy to telefrag stuff, but I'm too low on ammo to complain. This elevator ride is not for the claustrophobic. Intimate encounters with Kakos and one frustrated Baron give way to a mausoleum mosh pit that you'll almost certainly have to flee the first time. BFG responsibly. When you claim all three keys, a Baron's token great. cyber appears outside, and another emerges from the exit furnace right when you think you're free. Silhouette Cybe is a neat image, but very clunky to fight. Vengeance Unleashed takes no prisoners, even if you find every secret. Romero's onslaught of ideas may be familiar, but his delivery is as daunting as ever. Grade A minus, difficulty A minus. E6 M7. Descent into Terror. Jesus. Descent into Terror is one of John Romero's career-defining maps, a deliberately plotted abyssal odyssey that hooks you up to an IV drip filled with menace. No other map in Sigil 2 holds my attention so insistently. You want to start by hurrying down the elevator, through the grunts, and into the timed secret, which contains a life-saving mega armor and five of the 19 total rockets you'll get. The path oh, wow. here wends through blasted forests and possessed fragments of the human world, through still more demonic dungeons and labyrinths. This multi tiered maze, which hides a critical BFG and backpack for the intrepid climber, reversed my stance that the concept was beaten to death. The lack of cyber demons helps. Speak of the devil, Cauldron Scythe is a deadly sniper, and you only have one rad suit if you want to dispatch him the efficient way. Your duel will have to wait until you dig the red key out of this half-digested facility. Tiptoeing between the strobes, it occurred to me that Descent into Terror might be a Romero retrospective of sorts. Knee Deep in the Dead is barely recognizable, but it's here, if you will. and so is Against the Wickedly. Abandoned Minds, Tech Gone Bad, and Abaddon's Void. I like to think John is toying with our collective memory. Yeah, actually, with I really like that. With all loose ends tied, take a pensive ride through the cattle shoot of lifts and prepare for a mini-boss rush. These four barons are no joke if you're as desperate for ammo as I was on first pass, and then there's a farewell party for you in the castle. Time passes quickly in this map. It's a tense, methodical, and absorbing adventure. Grade A minus. That looked really B. cool. East. I really like that. That's that looked so neat. Six M eight. Abyss of despair. As a card-carrying Sigil Map 8 apologist, this one was particularly brutal to sit through three times. 
After an insipid preamble spent poking around another red cavern that's been force-fed shootable switch secrets, oh Romero boy. unveils the final showdown, which utterly befouls the bed. This time, instead of a cyber demon and a spider mastermind in the hallway, it's two cyber demons and a mastermind out in the open, which might have been a little more climactic if Romero didn't let you leave whenever you wanted. Spider Mama's health has been tripled to let her win it in fighting, so there's nothing keeping you from popping in and out. Oh, of does she have? Does she actually have nine thousand health? Oh wow. Okay until Spidey kills both goats or dies trying. This pathetic spectacle is dragged out by the oscillating platforms, which have absolutely no purpose except to annoy you. Sigil 2 goes out with an ugly cry, and the saddest part is, Abyss of Despair looks every inch the hardcore hellish closer it wants to be. What a shame. Grade D, difficult. Yeah, that's a shame. You can't really do... You can't really... It, it's, it's hard to do boss encounters like that in vanilla. I feel like it would have been better to just have one massive fight... D plus. That's it. So, if Sigil was the perfect bridge from the base games to the wide world of community creations, then Sigil 2 cements Romero's place in that world. On top of being Doom's most famous designer, he is now a fully tenured community mapper with a singular, sometimes anachronistic style. I still enjoy reciting the script on OG Sigil's nine levels, and I don't think that's solely because I was new to Dooming when I discovered it. But replaying Sigil 2 took the life out of it for me. The first Sigil is just a little tighter, simpler, and more unified than its sequel. Sigil 2 hams it up with gimmicks, devalues secrets by drowning you in them, flirts with different themes, and most importantly, becomes much easier to deconstruct with foreknowledge. My raggedy first impressions of these maps were a hell of a lot more fun than my practice runs, which is not my experience with Hold on, sorry. I lost my mouse for a second. Doom, by and large. I think Sigil 2 worked better as an event than as a wad. It will have always been an outrageous, nostalgic jaunt in December of 23, but I don't think I'll need to revisit it. I am prepared for Hellion, though. My final grade for Hellion, Sigil 2 that's what it's is called. a B-. Difficulty-wise, Sigil 2 starts off much, much harder than its predecessor, but ends up coasting down the finish line, so I think the two- Try harder, Satan! C-plus for Sigil 1 was totally wrong, by the way, so we're jacking that up to a B as well. Wait, C-plus for Sigil 1 was totally wrong, by the way, so we're jacking that up to a B as well. Okay. Now for my Dean's list. Valedictorian. Valedictorian, E6M7, Descent into Terror. Salutatorian, E6M6, Vengeance Unleashed. Class President is also E6M6, Vengeance Unleashed. And the dunce cap goes to E6M8, Abyss of Despair. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the wad down below. Love Hell to yeah. Think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know. Hell yeah, Mr. Mountain. Now I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. Aaron Allen. Okay, yeah, let me bypass this real quick. Oh, there's a little bit at the end. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you in the Dean of Doom Season 3 finale. 21 episodes, all right. Oh, there's nothing. It was just a, okay, just a couple extra seconds. All right. Very good. All right, I look forward to episode 21, whatever it may be. I speculate of Eternity 2, because I'm sure he wants to talk about that. But maybe it isn't. I don't know. I guess we'll see.